Hello, welcome again to Varsity Sports Live. Tom Neiman along with Jason and Derek Jandy's all jacked up tonight. I've been so wrapped up in game day at South yeah. Coast State. What's going on in high school football? High school football, I'll tell you what, this, this is the most fun part of the season because every team has a new season. They've got hope going into it. And it's funny, when I put out my blogs and podcasts and stuff, the interest swells the most right here at the beginning of the playoffs. So there's a lot of people out there that want to hear us talk good about their teams. And speculate on what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, this is... get... Some teams are into the playoffs in the lower classes. Some teams finishing up. Let's get to the scoreboards tonight because North Dakota had actual games tonight on Friday. And this was a huge one. Fargo Davy scores in the last minute to beat Shanley 17-14. That knocks Shanley out of the playoffs. Uh, Fargo Davies gets to 7-2. and two. Jody's got highlights coming up. West Fargo Cheyenne uh, beats up on Fargo South 42-14. But both of those teams will make the playoffs in North Dakota. West Fargo wins tonight over Grand Forks Central. West Fargo's 5-4, and four, and the Packers will be in the playoffs. Uh, North over Red River tonight, 13 to nothing, as those teams are done for the year. Bismarck and Century play tonight. Century wins 20 to 10. Bismarck Century is 9 and 0, but both of those teams are in the playoffs in the West. Mandan is in. Mandan is 6 and 3 now after the win over Jamestown tonight. Minot is in the playoffs in the big schools in North Dakota. They get to 5 and 4 by beating Williston tonight. Dickinson and Legacy finish up the season. Legacy with a 29-19 win there. In 2A in North Dakota. Hillsboro Central Valley. The Burroughs are 9-0 after they beat Valley City tonight. Jody's got highlights of that one coming up. Kindred gets to 7-2. The Vikings over Devils Lake tonight, 21-0. Beulah is 8-1, 39-0 tonight over Watford City. And Hazen evens out at 4-4 four four with a win over Turtle Mountain tonight in North Dakota. Again, Jody Northstead. Highlights coming up in a little bit. In South Dakota, Jandy. Games on Thursday night. Brandon Valley. Uh, beats up on Rapid City Stevens 28-7. Brandon Valley is 7-2, and, and we'll take a look at that game. O'Gorman is 7-2 and two as well as they beat Harrisburg on Thursday night 37-15. to 15. Have a rematch of both of those two games coming up next week. We've got uh, Watertown in double overtime, beat yeah. Aberdeen Central 44-41. to 41. We don't have highlights of this one, but this was crazy because after the first overtime they both scored, then Aberdeen hits a field goal. Watertown hits the touchdown to win it all. So Watertown's only their second win of the year, but the winner of that game advanced to the playoffs, and Watertown earned that spot. Uh, in 11A, Pier runs the table 9-0 for the Governor, 61-0 over Douglas on Thursday night. Brookings is 8-1 as they head into the playoffs, 44-14 uh, over Yankton. Huron is 5-4, and, and the Tigers will be the three seed in the playoffs as they beat up on Mitchell in that uh, rivalry. On Thursday night. Super important that they won that game. Everybody wants to stay out of that fourth spot where you might have to play Pier in the semifinals. We want to prolong that as long as possible. All right, uh, in double A as well, Sturgis over Spearfish. Sturgis is four and five on the season, Andy. Yeah, now they get to play Mitchell, a rematch for them. All right, in 11 A, T area and Dell Rapids played a great game in Dells. Dell scores late, goes for two, gets it. We'll take a look at the highlights coming up. Dell Rapids is nine and zero on the regular season. Canton over West Central, 28 to seven. Canton gets to seven and two. West Central is in the playoffs, however. We'll take a look at that coming up later. And I don't know how that happened because they ended up tying with Custer for that last spot in the first tiebreaker was head to head they did beat Custer earlier this they year did happen to play each other all right uh, in 11b playoffs on Thursday night first round opening round Bridgewater Emory Ethan shuts out hot springs so Bridgewater Emory Ethan moving on there Sioux Valley over Sisseton 60 to 8 it was uh, Mount Vernon Plankington over Chamberlain 34 to 7 as the Titans move on and also in 11b St. Thomas Moore beat Elk Point Jefferson on Thursday night some interesting 11B matchups, and then we move to nine-man football, and I'll tell you what, Dakota Hills almost pulled this one off. Hamlin f found a way to win. Yeah, there were not a lot of, uh, not really any upsets in that opening round in nine-man football, but Hamlin 48-34 as the Chargers do survive in advance. Baltic and Parker, we'll take a look at this game coming up as well. This was really good. Parker had the lead, Baltic comes back and wins it, and some playoff implications there for the Bulldogs. In 9A, Burke over Kimball White Lake, uh, 50 to 14. We'll take a look at that one coming up in a little bit. And in 9B, Jandy, Harriet Selby, the Wolverines, they've got the Michigan helmets and everything, 
And uh, they win. We'll take a look at the playoff implications of that one and as well. And we've got highlights yeah, from Langford. Some highlights from Langford on Thursday night. And Del Rapids St. Mary in the nine-man playoffs. No problem. Over Alcester Hudson, 70 to 30. All right, let's get to some of the highlights from Thursday night. Again, Jody Norstead standing by with all of the North Dakota stuff tonight. Uh, they had the live game tonight, which was really good between Davies and Shanley. So Jody's got those coming up in a little bit. We're going to talk about some AAA football last night and those ramifications that spill over into the playoff seedings. Um, and in case you weren't around or didn't know what happened last night, we'll get you all caught up. Start with Roosevelt at Washington. And the Riders, they needed this game. They and Lincoln have been uh, locked Number together here late in the season as far as who's going to get the number one seed. Aaron Kusler, great linebacker, pretty good running back too. Yeah, he's got six touchdowns running this year. It's nice they can bring a guy in late to do that. But this was all about defense, and it was team defense. Sacks after sacks, and they forced them to be a one-dimensional team. They couldn't pass, needed to run, and, of course, they've had trouble running this year. That was a pretty throw and a catch. Brady Dan bring to... You Kaden can't spike Jordan. it. You Why can't not? Spike it. I, I wonder if we got flagged for that. Celebrate. This is a really good throw as well. Max Thompson to Josh Piper, but not a whole lot of offense for Washington. He's just a sophomore. He's creeping up the list on all-time receptions in the season as a sophomore. So it was 31 to seven, and then this was the backbreak. And Michael Paulson makes one move and flies down the sideline to score. Nobody has more yards per catch in AAA than that guy right there. Mike Paulson having an outstanding senior season. Riders 38 to junior. seven. He's a junior, by the way. So uh, you see Tyree Nave back for Roosevelt, 100 yards on the ground. Danenbring was good again. And the Riders are eight and one. And again, they have the tiebreaker over Sioux Falls Lincoln. So Roosevelt's going to be the number one seed. They are the number one seed. Let's talk uh, to Brady Danenbring and Aaron Kusler after this one. And, uh, you know, it's just working hard in practice and just really trusting what our coaches do and us as players together and just um, really just got that team kind of stream, that pursuit. And um, it's just hard work. Um, it's just like any other team. I think just knowing that we've been so close before and that our chemistry is really good on top of it and that knowing that, you know, not getting too high after wins and not getting too low after a loss and being able to persevere and keep on getting better each week. So Roosevelt earning that number one seed. They've, they've got the most talent in this class, but they've had this history of not being able to finish things off, and you heard those two seniors there. They want to change the script a little bit. All right, so Roosevelt will be the number one seed. Lincoln is right there with them. Let's take a look at Lincoln taking on Rapid AJ City Hedding. Central. That is uh, Hunter Hansen. He's a big man for the Cobblers, six foot eight lineman. But they get around him here. Lincoln was making it look easy early. Tommy Thompson, a Hunter Merkley. Merkley's really come on in the second half of this season, and if they didn't have enough big playmakers, Merkley is uh, on another level. Speaking of big playmakers. MC Central's got all that razzle-dazzle. This was kind of a straight handoff, though, and Jeremy Weedman all the way down. Yeah, he took that direct snap, and nobody gets it done like Weedman. He's one of the fastest. We sped that up a little bit, but he's one of the fastest in the state. Lincoln connection again. Thompson to Merkley. Mark Ovenden all over it right there. Big Sesame Street guy loves it. And Lincoln really got out and played well early on. Thompson. Little dump in the flat to Isaiah Robinson. Lincoln was ahead 49 to 14 in the third quarter game. They got a huge, huge gap here. They put their number twos in, and that's when Cole Meisman decided to play football. Look at him here sliding and gliding and stepping through there, and this is one of our favorite receivers. Young Kloss. I think he only caught a couple passes in this game, but look at that. Wyatt Young Kloss with the score there, and the Cobblers make a game of it. Lincoln goes back to its number ones. Leo Kay with a great run here for the Patriots. But look at the final in this game. After it was 49 to 14, the final is 59 to 50. Yeah, a little bit deceiving because like you said, the twos came in for a long time. And as soon as it got within two scores, the starters came back in and, and kept the lead. But uh, what, a, what a season for Lincoln. Let's uh, hear from Hunter Merkley as the Pats move on. Our old line was just giving Tommy enough time to throw the ball, and we had scouted them all week, so we sort of knew what they were going to come out in, and it worked. Good so. evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, it worked. And who would have thought coming into the season, Lincoln would be a number two seed, not me. I had him at number six coming into the year. And again, they and Roosevelt both eight and one, but Roosevelt beat Lincoln back in the, like the third game of the year. So mm -hmm. Riders get the number one, Lincoln gets the number two, and Lincoln will play Sioux Falls, Washington. Uh, another regular season wrap up in 11 AAA. Stevens on the road at Brandon Valley. 
And Brandon Valley's got the ground game, Jandy. Yes, they Blocked do. Blocked by Luke Wickersham there and a touchdown run by Tate Johnson. This guy's been a machine. He's been taking all the carries. And this guy's been pretty good himself, Colton Hartford. But on this day, a couple picks got him. Joey Nimick with the uh, catch there. A little one-hand smack down by Bridger Nesbitt on the tackle. But this looks like the same play. It's not. Joe Colbeck picks it off this time for Brandon Valley. And then they go back to the ground game. JT Bieber blowing open a big hole there. Johnson slides through. And Brandon Valley rolls 28 to 7. They haven't exactly put the hammer down at home, but they're getting comfortable wins, and they do it because they run the ball so well. Yeah, another 141 yard day for Tate Johnson. And you see the matchup in the playoffs there. They'll play each other again coming up next Thursday. All right, let's go to Harrisburg and O'Gorman, Jason. Yeah, both teams looking for home field. The winner of this game would get a home field game in the quarterfinals next Thursday. Zach Norton to Tip Ryman. Look at that move. Big man can move. 7 0 Knights. Second half of the season, Ryman's been doing a lot more on offense. So, O'Gorman defense here. That's Jacob Schwab with the interception. Takes that down inside the 15 yard line and then into the sun. Trust Sam, me. Sam Stuckel gets lost over there and then comes out of the blazing glory <laughs> and scores a touchdown on O'Gorman's up 14 nothing. Yeah, I'd be excited too coming out of the sun and scoring a touchdown. Sun going down a little bit and O'Gorman keeps it rolling. Tate Wishard touchdown made it 27 to nothing. And then watch this catch. We, we had to throw this on there. Jai Rowert has been doing some crazy things, but one handed and then through the legs. Way to go, Jai. And what, but despite that, it was 34 to 8 at halftime. Uh, Alex Kowalic with an interception there again for O'Gorman. So nice to have Kowalczyk back. He's been out most of the year. He made a big difference. The hair was looking good in the postgame huddle there for those guys in O'Gorman. 37-15 uh, to 15, the final. The Knights are 7-2 and two on this season. And they, these two teams will play each other again in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, this is uh, – it's hard to tell how they're going to gauge each other. But after the game, I do know that Tegan Schlimgen and Tate Wishard were pumped up. How we hope to be hitting our peaks, so hopefully a specialist about us is that we're only going uphill from here. Hopefully we win out, make it to Brookings. You know, we came out there and we took it to them right away, which got us confidence up, and uh, that just carried on. If we work together as a team, we play outstanding, and once we don't, then things start to go downhill. we got to find that back up. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, Tegan. They're coming on. I thought this game would be closer. I, I thought O'Gorman would win, but I had no good reasoning behind it. I thought it would be closer, too. And next week could be. It's, uh, it's really important to notice uh, Tate Wishard's up to 23 touchdowns rushing this year. And Alex Kowalczyk back in the middle of that defense makes this O'Gorman defense so much more stout. So it'll be Harrisburg at O'Gorman next Thursday in the first round of the playoffs. Let's go to 11A, Jenny. Again, these are the last games of the regular season for these guys. Great game. T area and Del Rapids. Go back and forth, couple of the heavyweights in the class. Colin Rents, throwback screen to Logan Stone, who goes strides. all the way. Those are, those are deer strides. Those up ground, man. Down the field. But this is a game with two. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Zach Schreier's fired up. Titans, they'll come back. Joey Hedrick Big scores night. there at 7 to 6. T in the lead at halftime. Yeah, th we knew this would be a low scoring game. We were wondering if both teams would come out. You know, they don't have that much to play for, honestly. They both have home field wrapped up throughout the playoffs with Joey Hedrick. They, they were playing. They were playing hard. Great blocking again. Tees in the lead 14 to 6. And then Hedrick goes to the outside. 20 carries, 157 yards, three touchdowns, and a wave for Hedrick. T area is up 21 to 6 in the third quarter, but this is not over. Dells comes back. This is Austin Henry in at quarterback. Allen got hurt. And this is Logan Ellingson. Henry drops it right in there. Ellingson goes in. Ellingson had a huge game. So it's 21 to 14. T is still in the lead, but a big play here. Austin Lake, tough run for the Titans, but he loses the football at the end there. Drew Van Regenmorter is on it for Del Rapids. And then they go back to the air. This is Henry again. The sophomore comes in there. Ellingson coming back for that one. That's an important point here. This is the back of quarterback doing all this. And then Ellingson coming back for this one. And then Logan Stone is going to take it in on a big pig pile. So T is still in the lead. It's 21 to 20. T still in the lead here, but the Warriors decide to go for two. And you're not going to see it very well, but 
Trust me. That is Logan Ellingson again, making the catch for the two-point conversion. And Del Rapids. How many comes, times have they done that this year? They come from 21 to six down. They go for two and win it. And they are 9-0 on the season. They keep winning these one-point games. They're grinding up. Nobody talking about Del Rapids, but they just keep winning. And after the game, Logan Ellings had told us how important going for two was. It's a heck of a decision. I loved it. The whole team loved it. And we finished it. Our players played hard the whole game. I loved it. I love these boys. These are my boys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dells is 9-0. They will play uh, West Central. On Thursday. So much fun. That game was a blast. First round of the playoffs. Also in 11A, speaking of West Central, they were hosting Canton on Thursday night. Kind of a mini game day going on there. And some great blocking for Cooper Morris. And the Trojans score first. They're up early. But. And from the outside in, this looked like a game West Central needed to win. They weren't sure if they were going to make the playoffs or not if they lost. But uh, Mr. Caden Verley, man, this guy is something else. Gets him close, steps out there, and then Isaac Dietzenbach finishes off the scoring drive here for Canton. You forget about Dietzenbach and Scheidt with Burley running so often, but that's exactly what Vince Benedetto said, is they got one of the best backfields overall in the state. Watch Burley again right here. Bounces, scores again, another touchdown, and 28-7 is the final here, so Canton is 7-2. Uh, and two. Canton's going to be the number three seed in 11A. Seven wins in a row for this Canton Seahawk team. And uh, after the game, Caden Burley checked in with us. Uh, the first half was a little sloppy. The second half, we uh, were able to move the ball because the line was getting a good push. So we came out on top. Well, I knew that they were a tough team and, and they were going to bring it and be ready to go. This is basically a play playoff game for them. Uh, so I was, I, I was a little nervous, kind of chewed them out a little bit at halftime. And then we um, really stepped up in the second half, really proud of how the kids stepped up. Rich Lundstrom said that after the game, he's like, we're playing a three and five team. What's there to worry about? Well, this game was, game was closed throughout. And uh, Canton realizes, well, Rich for sure realizes, that there's a lot of good teams in 11A. And the way West Central played, a couple things go their way. I mean, they're right in this thing. Yeah, and West Central gets in. We'll take a look at all the playoffs uh, a little bit later on. But Canton will play Dakota Valley. All the, the games in 11A in the playoffs Terrific uh, should be really good. Nine-man games. Baltic and Parker, 9AA. This is the opening round of the playoffs. And this was a great game, too. Yeah, started both, out here. Both teams played just a couple weeks ago against each other. A little different this time. Pass tip there. Avery Nordby picks it off and goes the other way, and the dogs are up 7-0 early. Tanner even for Parker had a big game. He is the offense. Big kid. He's about 6'1, 205 pounds. Doesn't score here, but he would a little bit later on in the game. And then look at the zip on this pass by Zach Polzine, and Baltic goes up 14-0. The first time they played, Polzine did not play in this game, so to have him zipping those was good. But Tanner even, like you said, one of the really good, really good players in this game. So even scored there. It was 14-6 at halftime. This is the third quarter. Even again for the end of the third quarter, and then here in the fourth, even with his second touchdown. Two-point conversion was no good, so Baltic still in the lead, 14-12. And then Parker does take the lead here. Colby Olson with the touchdown grab, two point good, and Parker takes the lead 20 to 14. But Baltic back at him, pulls in to Sam Sittig. And then a sneak by Polzine. The extra point was blocked, so it's tied 20 20. Yeah, and before this, there was a fumble recovery that Baltic took advantage of. Parker had control of this game. Baltic found a way somehow to pull this one out. Brendan Allen with that last touchdown. Baltic uh, wins it 26-20. They are in the playoffs for sure in uh, 9 double. Well, this is the playoffs. They are moving on in the playoffs. In the quarters. And here is Zach Polzine afterwards. Oh, it was, it was an intense game, but we believed in each other. We believed in the coaches. We stuck together. We came out on top. Uh, most important thing for our team was defense and special teams. We really came out at the end of there and uh, we stuck together and did what we were supposed to do. That's how we came out on top. So this was one of those games that on paper looked really close, ended up being really close, 
Baltic won both times they played against Parker this year, and uh, they keep moving on. Baltic's been they good. They've been close good. the last couple they've of had, years. They've had some injuries that they've just overcome, but um, I'll tell you what, the, the players they had out there on Thursday night look like they could advance, you know, a round or two more. Baltic will be at duel in the uh, next round of the That'll playoffs on Thursday. 9A playoffs on Thursday night. Kimball White Lake at home taking on Burke. When I was at opening that round. I, mean, I, I thought this would be another one of those close games, but they played two weeks ago and no one could pass the ball because the weather was so terrible. Burke decided to pass the ball on this day. Hunter Van Nuen heist to Tyson Mayer there. How beautiful is that picture, Jandy? Wow. wow. It was pretty cool. For Kid, about 20 minutes until it's. Kid Lenz scores for Kimball White Lake. And then the Cougars, though, go back to work. Van Nuen heist to Mayer again. Yeah, same guy. Big play for Mayer. He had a wonderful night. Three touchdowns received. And then Burke on a screen here. Finn Hansen. You will never see a straighter line run by a running back <laughs> into the end zone. He didn't move an inch either way, and he scores. And Baltic, or excuse me, Burke started to roll it up a little bit. Van Nuen heist to Jaden Frank. I thought this was back and forth. That the first couple drives were scores, and then Burke literally took this game over. And they threw the ball. Look at that, 500, almost 500 total yards, six touchdowns through the air. Kimball White Lake, the run is done for the Wildcats. And uh, Burke moving on, though, the at Britain Hecla in the second round of the nine man playoffs. 9B, some bonus coverage, Dandy, from Langford. So far. Harriet Selby there on a Thursday night. And yeah. This was the, the most hotly contested game in 9B, and, and this started out all Lions, too. Langford on fourth and 18. That's Colin Fry. Fourth and 18. To Xander Widener. He keeps hitting himself in the head throughout. He, he did several okay. times. A couple of plays later, Fry with the touchdown. And the Lions in the lead. Next time they get the ball, Xander Widener again. And knocking on wood at the end of that 52 yard run. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> So Langford's up 14 to nothing, but Harriet Selby got it going. The Wolverines, Jandy. Did you see the play action on Yeah, that? a couple of fakes there. Wade Begum to Colton Schumacher for a touchdown. This play action is something they've been perfecting throughout the season. So Langford going to mess up a snap here. Trevor Saylor's on it for Harriet Selby. And then Clayton Randall get off me. I'm going in. Touchdown there, 14-14 after they got down 14-0. They call him Junior. Dad's the coach, and Clayton knows how to run, that's for sure. And then Langford had another long drive going here, but... He is not is, down, yeah, by the way. Is that a fumble, or was he down? He was, he was not down. We looked at it in slow-mo. The refs made the right call. I think a lot of people on the field thought maybe he was down. Goes the other way. Eric Selby in the third quarter here. Wolverines do get the lead. Beg him into Carter Tisdall. To me, that was the difference. Was the, the play action freed up a lot of passing in the second half. Langford stays close, though. Fry with another touchdown, and it was a 22-20 game. Harriet Selby still had the lead after this long run, and it was close there, but then Harriet Selby outscores the Lions 22 to nothing after this. That's the two-point that kept it close, but Harriet Selby rolls from here. It started getting muddy. Those cuts, I tell you what, those cuts are not as easy as Clayton Randall made them look. Randall again. And the Wolverines stacking it on after this. So after it was a 22-20 game, Harriet Selby wins it 44 to 20. So the Wolverines moving on. They'll play uh, a really good Del St. Mary team. Yeah, and they've got a shot in this one if Clayton Randall does what he did in this game. 260 yards on the ground and after the game, we were the only people to able to catch up with him. Uh, you know, we had a lot of doubters here and I think it was just a mentality that we came here to win a game and we we're going to do whatever it takes to do that. Uh, you know, we'll go play anybody, anytime, anywhere, any place. Doesn't matter. So, we're ready. Yeah. I think I was one of those doubters. I mean, I, this was a coin flip game for me, but in my picks, I did pick Langford. So um, I guess 
I'm one of your doubters there, Clayton. And then they reseed in nine man. So Harriet Selby is going to be the sixth seed. They'll play uh, at Del Rapids St. Mary coming up on Thursday. We've got one game from the All Nations Conference. They're in their playoffs right now, the new conference. You went out to Lower Brule. We'll take a look at that game coming up later. Yep. And a really good running back, one of the best in the state for Lower Brule. Yeah, he averaged over 40 yards a carry. That's a that's your tease. All right, we'll take a look at that game later. Jody Norstead is standing by in North Dakota. All those games that were tonight, including Davies and Shanley, in a great one. Jody's up next. Varsity Sports Live on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics, South Dakota State University, and Farmers Union Insurance. Welcome back. Let's get up to West Fargo. Jordy Norstead standing by. And we had the live game here on Midco Sports Network tonight. It was Fargo Davies at uh, Shanley, the Fargo matchup there. And this was crazy because Fargo Shanley is not going to make the playoffs. I don't know how this happened, but here's Jody. Yeah, there's a, there right? are so many different scenarios going in to that, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I have no idea how they didn't make the playoffs. I need you to explain this. <laughs> Well, we'll explain it quite thoroughly here, but uh, five teams were fighting for four playoff spots in the East. There's potential going into the night that we would have a five-way tie for first place, and one of those teams is going to have to not go play in the playoffs tied for the EDC championship. So, so many scenarios. The West was a little bit more simple. Century and Bismarck playing for the WDA title tonight, but let's start in the East. Shanley Taking on Davies, you just saw it live on Midco Sports Network. The first meeting between these two is EDC opponents, separated by a mile and a half. And I know it was a regular season, but this had playoff football written all over it. Some nerves there, a botch snap on a punt. Deacons capitalize, Cooper Mattern makes it 6-0. First play of the ensuing drive, Reed Hartness, 80 yards to Ty Satter. The future Bison taking it to the house. Shanley was Missing safety and receiver Town Hopper, and that hurt on both sides. Shanley showing some explosiveness, though. Carter Copeman has it for a nice gain here, but he fumbles it. And then Reed Hardness fumbles it back to the Deacons. Carter Copeman racing down the sidelines for the 85 yard touchdown return. It's 14 10 Deacons at the half. Then Hartness going to the air in the second half. Justice Noel, he fumbles. John Gore strips it. Isaac Emineth recovers. Then the Deacon defense turning up the heat. Joe Cava with the sack. Cava was a monster on this night. The future Bison playing what would end up being his final game as a Deacon. But boy, he played his life out tonight. Here's another hit from Cava. And Leo Hansen, big old linebacker in there. Cooper Mattern. Trying to get his team rolling here, up 14 to 10. But Caleb Schustrom, this guy wrestles farm animals in his spare time. He wrestles down the quarterback there. And then with 130 left, Reed Hardness finally engineers a scoring drive for the Eagles. They beat Shanley and they knocked him out of playoff contention. How about that? 17 to 14. It was 14 10 for so long until the final minutes when Hardness pounds that one in and the Davies Eagles win this one they secure a home playoff game and knock out Shanley with the 17 to 14 win afterward we asked Hartness about that big run in the final moments. Basically get my pads down and just be a dude and our, our old line did a hell of a job so it was great. I'm proud of our kids that kept hanging in there we kept shooting ourselves in the foot shooting ourselves in the foot turnovers and goofy stuff and uh, they just kept battling and we found a way and I mean, that's all you can ask for as a head coach is that they, you know, they give you their best effort all the time. We knew once uh, our offense scored, we knew we had to um, lock it down on defense and not let them move the ball. And luckily, they didn't have any timeouts left, and we were able to just stop them on uh, three plays and or four plays. And it's just a great feeling now that uh, now that it's over and we get a home playoff game. You got to look at that 25th Street Showdown trophy that they'll play for now. With Davies winning, Fargo South is in the playoffs, with the Bruins, of course, playing at the same time against EDC co-leader Cheyenne, knowing their backs were against the wall. Cheyenne playing to lock up a second straight East Region crown, and they didn't waste much time. Grant Work and Tina Brika Penny, it's 7-0 for the game's first score. Next drive for the Mustangs, Work and Team drops a dime right to Tyler Terhart. Past two defenders, how about that? Then on the next play, Zach Rogers punches it in from eight yards out, and the Mustangs are up 14-zip early in the second quarter. 
Cheyenne now up 20-0 when they strike again, and it's working team to Penu, the receiver out of the backfield. The EDC's leading rusher, 52 yards to the house, Penu. Oh, how about that? 28-0 Cheyenne, this one getting out of hand. South finally gets some offensive production with a minute to go in the half, and it comes off a screen pass to Sibumana Enoch, one of the best players in the EDC, just a junior. Made almost the entire Mustang defense miss. He takes it 37 yards, still running, running around the world on that fancy turf at Cheyenne. Down to the 23, next play, Peyton Kessel going to lob it up to Kevin Hardy. Not one of the household names for that Fargo South offense, but he gets it down to the one. South finally punching it in. Danny LaHaye finds the edge with 17 seconds left in the half. So it's 28-7 in favor of Cheyenne at the break. First play from scrimmage of the second half. Enoch gets the toss. Look at him go to work again. 69 yards, and he's going to the house, running over people. Get out of my way, official. Enoch is into the end zone. Cheyenne goes back to work, though, on the ground. Gets another touchdown. Jeremy Newton watching his team do what they do best. Rogers into the end zone, 35-14. Cheyenne wins the game, and they win the EDC title for the second straight year. Take a look at the scoreboard here for the Mustangs. 42-14. They put a thumping on South to win it and win the EDC title in the top seed. Uh, they played hard and, and uh, they did a good job. They persevered. South's got athletes and they did a really good job too. So it was, uh, it was a great win for us. It's an, it's an awesome feeling, especially in this EDC that's kind of uh, loaded this year. We had a lot of good teams in it. So it's come out on top, it's outstanding for our young men. It's a tremendous job. Uh, he's been throwing a lot of dimes to me this year, uh, making it easier on my job. And our line's given him a lot of time and that's a big part of why you know, he can get that ball on the spot. It's amazing. You know, get, being EDC champs last year, you know, we had to be EDC champs this year. Uh, it was a goal we've had, but now we got to go and take it to the postseason. So the four teams from the East in order will be Cheyenne, Davies, West Fargo, and South. Bismarck and Century, though, playing for the WDA title, a rematch of last year's state championship game. And I've touted Cade Feeney as being the best player in the state all year. It's plays like this that back it up. Extending the play and finding Grant Anderson for this touchdown. 6-0 pass. Here's your hit of the week. Bismarck with the complete pass, and Griffin Jensen decletes the receiver. Century actually up 7-0. They did get the extra point on that first touch on the pass. Turn out yards like crazy on the ground. Cade Garcia sheds a few tackles, sprints to the end zone. 13 rep Century. Bismarck gets on the board on the second. Cade Rolfs looking for Nick Hins, one of the heroes from last year's state championship game against the Patriots. And all of a sudden, the Demons have some life. That was a crazy looking catch. Trailing 13 7 now. Then Bismarck says, let's try an onside kick. Why not? Mason Stotts with a perfect kick. Gunnar Swanson recovers. How about that? And Stotts ends up scoring too. He splits the uprights to trim the century lead to 13 10 going into the locker room. We have a game here. But in the second half, more of the same from the blue and red. Garcia with a sidestep. And how about a little bit of a spin here? Boop. Right at the end, he's an unreal athlete, just a junior. That makes it 20 to 10. The Century defense does the job from there, forcing three straight demon turnovers to end the game. Feeney forces a fumble and recovers, and then why not pull off an interception too? He seriously does it all. I know he's going to play baseball at NDSU, but man, he's a dandy of a quarterback. Century wins it 20 to 10, beating their rivals to claim the WDA title. We knew going into the game that it was going to be a good game. They were going to come out fighting. It's the Demons. They're never going to lay down. So uh, I think just our coaches got us motivated at the start, and we just we took it to them right away, but then we just slowed down. And I know, I know that uh, three weeks now, got to win or go home. So, I mean, we got to get better every week now and just hopefully come away with a win at the end of the night. Anytime you can win the uh, turnover advantage in high school football, uh, you got a great shot to come out on top. And, and this year we've been uh, very fortunate, uh, I think, tonight. We had one turnover, if I'm not mistaken. That was the first turnover we've had now, I think, in the last six or seven games. Blood on the nose of Feeney. Now that is a football player. Legacy needed a win and a Minot loss against Wilston to make the playoffs as the four seed. Sabres hosting Dickinson. Rhett Clemens to Ben Morrow for the first down. Dickinson now trying to find some points. Troy Bird, great sophomore, carries it for a first down. Just rumbling and bumbling into people. Landon Amon struggling in the pocket here. Quick pass to Berg, who runs it for 15. But take a look at the scoreboard. The Sabres end up doing their job tonight. They go on to beat the Midgets 29-19. to 
So, Legacy does its job, but Minot can make it a moot point to win for the Magi out in Wilson, and they nab the final West Region ticket and kick the Sabres into the offseason. Coyotes went for the fake punt, didn't work. Minot took it over in their territory. Peyton Fillion scores on an 18-yard run, 7-zip. Still in the first chase, Burke goes off on a 14-yard run, 14-zip. Then in the second, watch Burke go 35 yards to Pater. 20 to zip, Minot. See you later. Boy, how about that run game for Minot? They run their way into the playoffs tonight. Take a look at the scoreboard. They route 41 to 0. The Magicians in the playoffs is the four seed after knocking out Legacy. So here we go. Our first look at the Class 3A playoff bracket with the quarterfinals kicking off a week from tonight. Let's take a look at that bracket. Fargo South sneaks in but earns a first round trip to top ranked and unbeaten Century. Mandan and Davies will get a rematch. The Eagles. Beat the Braves 36-26 in Mandan earlier this season. Minot will visit back-to-back -back EDC champ Cheyenne. The Mustangs beat the Magi 28-14 earlier this year. West Fargo will travel to Bismarck for the other quarterfinal. Jay Gibson, Mark Gibson, two legendary head coaches going head-to-head -head in a battle of the last two state champs. What a fun bracket this is shaping up to be. How about two-way? The East Region title still up for grabs on the final night as top-ranked and undefeated Hillsborough Central Valley and Valley City squared off for the crucial top spot. Gavin Wright receives the opening kickoff, and you can't pin the tail on that, Burrow. Wright takes it back 95 yards down the sideline. How about that for setting the tone for the Burrows? Boom, Gavin Wright, fantastic playmaker for Scott Olson's team. Then a six plus minute drive for Hillsborough Central Valley. They cap it off with this Oscar Benson touchdown run. HCV up 13 0 at the half. Later in the third, how about a little trickeration? After overcoming penalties on the drive, the Burroughs pull out the bag of tricks. Got to be Micah Gallagher giving it to receiver Carson Henningsgaard here. Carson Henningsgaard, of course, a great basketball player. But check out the play. He's going to float a touchdown pass to Gavin Wright. And it's 19-0. Take a look at the final score because that's what it is. 19-0. Burroughs win the East Region title. Improved to 8-0. No. So that fills out our Class AA bracket. The quarterfinal round gets underway a week from tomorrow. Devils Lake will head to Beulah. Miners hammered the Firebirds by 30 this year. Hazen will take a trip to Valley City. Those two played a close game earlier this year. Highlanders winning 14-7. Other half of the bracket, Hillsborough Central Valley taking on Turtle Mountain. Burroughs are 32-1 over the last three years combined. Kinder will travel to St. Mary's in the first meeting between those two since the 2016 state championship. So guys, the matchups are set in Class 3A and 2A. It's going to be fun. We'll have a little bit of a Class A preview coming up next with a look at the Oaks Tornadoes. Uh, but uh, it's going to be fun, baby. Let's play. EDC was fun. EDC was wild, but now we know. At least now we know. Cheyenne and Davies, the one, the two. West Fargo, a dangerous three seed, I think, going out and taking on Bismarck next week. All right, thanks, Joe. We'll get back to you here in a little bit. You bet. All right, Dandy, when we come back, uh, we'll take a look at lower brewer highlights and uh, this running back who is just setting the world on fire. Also, some zone coverage coming up. We'll hear from the coaches from Lincoln, Roosevelt, O'Gorman, Dell Rapids on their wins on Thursday night. Varsity Sports Live on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics, South Dakota State University, and Farmers Union Insurance. Welcome back. Time for zone coverage. We'll get some more uh, post game from the Sioux Falls coaches here in a little bit. Let's go back up to Jody Norstead in West Fargo, and there are playoff games in North Dakota on Saturday, correct, Jody? Yeah, you bet, guys. The Class A and nine-man playoffs begin tomorrow, and Oaks is about to be part of both of them. They were part of nine-man last year. They ended up reaching the semifinals, getting so close to playing for that state championship game. But the silver lining was the fact that all but two players from that team returned for this year. So fueled by that experience, the team is 7-1. and one. They're hosting a playoff game tomorrow, and they feel they have the weapons to go on a run. The Oaks Tornadoes have gotten used to some new rules this fall. Enrollment numbers vaulted them from nine man last year to class A 11 man this season. And there have been learning lessons every Friday night. Five guys are eligible in nine man, five guys are eligible in 11 man. So we get two more guys to cover those five guys. So we feel like we, uh, you know, added two playmakers on our defense. Offensively, um, 
you know, the, the field shrinks. Despite the extra traffic, Oaks' tornado of talent has flourished. Quarterback Garrett Meal, running back Logan Sell, and tight end Ashton Biesterfeld have led the charge for a team that hasn't rested on the laurels from last season. We've always had kind of a next man up mentality where we always have people that are ready to go and we had some good skill kids that didn't get a lot of time last year that got to step up this year. And They're a year older, right? So, so we feel like, um, you know, that, that physical maturity happened and then they worked their tails off this summer. Uh, we paid the rent every day. The keys to the rental have been in the hands of junior quarterback Garrett Meal. He combined for 25 touchdowns last season and is always finding different ways to beat the defense and make plays from his defensive back position. I use my athleticism, I guess, and try to make smart plays, and I'd say that's my biggest strength. You know, Garrett's done a great job getting us out of bad plays. You know, I call a bad play uh, against the defensive look, and, and he's able to check us out into a better play. Me and Garrett have had pretty good chemistry because, I mean, we've been friends growing up, and. We just know, pretty much know what each other are thinking. You know, when things go downhill, our kids look to Garrett to, to step up and make a play, and, and he's able to do that a lot of times. Meal has also had the luxury of handing the ball off to Sell. The second team All-State running back and linebacker is dangerous on both sides of the ball, but he wasn't always the go-to weapon. You know, Logan was an offensive lineman for us his freshman year, so he kind of, he's got a, a little bit of an inside track about um, how we block things. And, and that, that allows him to, to make good pre-snap reads. I like to think that I know our offense pretty well and I can make plays when I need to. Sometimes when I improvise, it gets me in trouble, but sometimes it doesn't and it works out pretty well for us. Just when you think you have the Tornado's offense figured out, they'll hit you with number 33. And trust me, it hurts. Ashton Biesterfeld is, well, quite literally a beast on both sides of the ball. He's a matchup nightmare. Ashton's big and he's got great hands. If our run game's getting stopped uh, and we need to go to the air, uh, Ashen's definitely the biggest target on the field. It's hard to cover a guy like that. The praise from his teammates is nice, but Biesterfeld likes to keep himself humble. I know I'm not really the fastest guy on the field, but <laughs> it's easier for me to catch the ball when, you know, I got big hands. And Oaks got a revenge game against Thompson earlier in the year when they won convincingly 37-14. The win all meant something a little different to them. Personally for me, my freshman year, I broke my collarbone in Thompson, and then last year I had a little leg injury, and they vented my basketball, or they shortened up my basketball season, and you know, it's just been kind of like a, it was a mental game, really. It was kind of intimidating going into a game against the team that's ended your season two years in a row, but I mean, we just, we knew it was a new year. We went in there knowing they were the five team in the state that week, and uh, after the last two years, especially for me personally and the other seniors, having gone from 0-8, then getting beat out by them two years in a row in the playoffs, to have them come here and beat them out that way, it was, it was a big deal. And if Oaks wants to make another deep playoff push this year, you can bet they'll lean on their three studs to do so. And good luck to the Tornadoes and the rest of the teams tomorrow. Uh, Class A and I man preview. We did a podcast this past week, Brad Anderson, Chase Miller, and myself. Uh, so make sure to check that out to get you set for tomorrow's matchup. Guys, as I leave you, I will give you two upset picks for tomorrow. Thompson is going on the road to play at Harvey Wells County. They're playing that one in Minot. So I'll take Thompson on the road, and I'll take Kidder County at Mohaw Lansford Sherwood. Those are my two upset picks. I agree with both of those. Oh, that's look probably at you. Bad. You're doing your homework, that's Jandy. Nah, that's probably bad. I don't give you enough credit. All right, we'll see. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, you bet, guys. All right, back in South Dakota, the big schools are done with the regular season now. Sioux Falls Roosevelt's going to be the number one seed in the 3A playoffs. Uh, they are 8-1 and one after a win over Washington on Thursday night. And Kim Nelson talked to us after the game. He's, not so, he's pretty sure about the defense, not so sure about offense. Our defense was really good. But it starts with our defense, and with our defense can stop the run and make the other team one-dimensional, then uh, we got a chance. Well, we need to be more consistent on offense. You know, we kind of hit and miss a little bit and sputter a little bit. And, and I feel like sometimes we, we rely on a big play too much. Now, we had a couple nice drives tonight with by running the football, which was encouraging. Uh, but there's times where you just absolutely have to run the, fo the football and, and be physical, and we have, a, have to be a little more uh, consistent with that part of our game, I think. And it's, it's little things right now. Very little there. things that they're fine-tuning. They've got a very good team. They got more talent than anybody you think. And I think I think so. All I right. don't think anybody's going to argue that. All right, what about Sioux Falls Lincoln? Lincoln also 8-1. and one. Who saw that coming? 
as uh, they are rolling into the playoffs. They got by Rhapsody Central 59-50 to on Thursday night, but uh, they were ahead big in that game, and they are 8-1. and Yeah, Jared Fredenberg explains a little bit about how this game unfolded. Well, we, we just got to be us, and we just, you know, we got to do our job. And, and so a little bit tonight, you know, we just got a little bit undisciplined and, and tried to do too much at times, and we just got to do our do what we've been doing all year. I mean, we've been we've been solid all year with the running game. We played solid defenses, and so you know we're fine. I mean, this game was never in question. We we kept our twos out there because of that. It was always a three score game, and we just want, didn't want to get some of our our key guys injured, and so we just put in you know our, our seconds and thirds. So you know that's just how it worked out. All right, Lincoln rolling on. They'll play Washington in the first round of the playoffs, and Sioux Falls O'Gorman is. Dangerous as well. One of the best games of the year that they played was on Thursday night, and Jason Papinga talked about it after the game. Yeah, momentum's obviously big for us, and you know, being able, especially when we're looking at playing the Tigers again next week, that you know our kids will have a lot of confidence going into that. But you know, the bad side of that is you got to play the Tigers again next week, and you know they've obviously seen what we did, and you know they're going to have adjustments for us, and you know we're going to have to counteract that and play another great game. So I mean, they're obviously a really good team by their season that they've had. Yeah, they beat, they beat Harrisburg 37-15. to 15. Maybe see that tighten up. You're going to see it tighten up. We've seen AAA all over the board this year, and I think everything comes back to the middle. Both those two teams will come back to the middle, and we've got that one live right here on Midco Sports Network. Very excited about that. 11A is going to be great playoff games. Eight really good teams still alive there. Del Rapids is the number one seed. Uh, they beat T area 22-21 to 21 with that comeback, and they go for too late. There's a story behind that. Though. Well, that's the story. I think Jason Huska is going to tell us a little bit more about that story. His starting quarterback, Colin Rents, went out, and uh, it affected the special teams. This team is very resilient. Um, we've talked about it before, but they, they, they didn't quit. Um, had, had a couple opportunities there where we could have hung our heads and, and kind of tucked away, but our kids kept battling, kept their heads up, kept working, um, able to put make a couple of plays there and uh, crawl back into it. Colin hurt early, earlier is our holder for a PAT, so we didn't have another choice. For a second, because I had forgotten that he had gotten hurt, um, and then when that got brought back up, we knew we were going for two instead of putting a new guy out there to try to hold a PAT. So don't need to hold it, and, and it didn't mean that much. They probably have home field throughout anyway, but for them to go for two and get that win, that's huge for the kids. And Austin Henry, the sophomore quarterback, came in and played really well for Dell Rapids. So Dell's is 9-0 and going into the playoffs. We'll take a look at the brackets for 11-man uh, playoffs in South Dakota and a look at uh, Lowell Brewer. Yeah. When we come back. Welcome back. Uh, let's go to Lower Brule, South Dakota, Jandy. This is just west of the Missouri River, right across the river from Fort Thompson. The All Nations Conference started this year. They're in their playoffs. This was Cheyenne Eagle Butte at Lower Brule earlier this week. And who is this guy? This is Michael Loera Prado. And just like the PA announcer said, one of the best athletes in the state. This is what he did all day long. This is the number two seed playing the number three seed. Everybody expected it to be a close game, but uh, Michael Luer Prado carried the ball 12 times. He converted seven of those to touchdowns. He only got tackled five times. He had more touchdowns than he got tackled. And look at these runs. He's all over the place. A crazy day, and Lower Brule advances to the semifinals after that win. All right, we'll take us through the brackets here for uh, South Dakota playoffs. Triple A, uh, all, obviously all rematches, but two rematches with only a week between them. We've got Stevens playing Brandon Valley consecutive weeks, Harrisburg and O'Gorman, of course, we got that one on Midco Sports Network next week. And these games are all coming up on Thursday, Halloween night in 11AA. This is gonna be fun too, because after Pier, anything could happen. We saw here on pull a game off, so uh, the first round not as exciting, but I'm looking forward to the second. Yeah, Brookings is eight and one there. Del Rapids is the number one seed. Uh, they are 9-0. Lennox and Madison both finished 5-4. and four. 
All those games are great. I those can't wait to see the Lennox. are going to be good. And 11B, Bridgewater, Emory, Ethan, number one. They're in danger here. Sioux Valley's a really good team. That'll be fun to watch. St. Thomas Moore, a sneaky seven seed as well. Check out Jandy's uh, podcast yep, and everything we'll, else we'll on cover social media. So much college football on Saturday here. We've got Montana State at North Dakota, North Coast State at South Coast State, Southern Illinois at USD, all on Midco Sports Network 1 and 2 on Saturday. We'll see you next Keep week. it here.